So for those of you that don't know me, I'm Dan, Dan McClain from Razus Running Company. Um, thank you for letting me come and talk to you guys about running and running shoes. Um, I've brought several different examples of, of running shoes. I've brought some, some tri shoes, uh, some speed laces that are great for triathletes, uh, you know, so you can get them on quicker. Uh, and I've brought a couple of different things. We'll talk about a few different things. Starting, start with shoes and start with what we do at Razus Running Company. Um, when you come into the store to, to buy shoes, it's not like going to uh, one of the big box stores like Academy or something and pulling a shoe off the wall and guessing to see if that's the right shoe, taking it home, having issues with it. Um, it's actually, uh, we do professional gait analysis in there. So you come into the store, we ask you several different questions. Uh, what you're training for, if you're training for anything, if you're just a casual runner, 5K, 10K, marathon, etc. Uh, we're going to put you in the right shoe for that. We're going to do professional gait analysis, so we are going to watch you do a couple of things. But we're going to put you through some fun little exercises, uh, have you walk for us barefooted. We're going to have you, uh, depending on what we see, there's, there's several different stages we can take it to, but uh, ultimately put you on a treadmill, watch you run on the treadmill, make sure that the shoes that we get you in are good for you while you're running, not just necessarily while you're walking, because things, things sometimes change in your gait from, from walking to running, so we want to make sure you're in running shoes, not walking shoes or standing shoes. There definitely, uh, there's some motion involved in it, so we want to see that motion, make sure everything's working right. Um, there's several different types of running shoes. Obviously, there's, there's several different brands. There's some great brands out there. Um, but as far as the types of running shoes go, there are, um, there are basically four different types of what we call stability, motion control, and neutral. You, you basically start with, them. there's a neutral shoe, there's a guidance shoe, there's a stability shoe, and there's a motion control shoe. And what that means is, uh, if you're in a neutral shoe, your gait is, it's proper, I guess you would say, when you walk. It's, it's right down the center line of your foot where it's supposed to be. Um, you are not pronating, uh, which means basically when you take a step, your, your arches collapse. That's pronation, and depending on how severe the pronation is, um, that's going to get you out of a neutral shoe and into either a guidance shoe for slight pronators, a stability shoe if you pronate pretty heavily, or a motion control shoe if you just have a lot of problems, a lot of issues, and you're really, really coming in. We want to make sure that you're neutral, you're striking right down the center line of your foot when you run, <clears throat> because that's the way you, you save from getting injuries. Uh, when you're pronating and you're running in your are collapsing, your, your, your joints are doing fun, funny things. Uh, if we don't get them straight, get those feet straight, you're going to end up with um, shin problems, knee problems, hip problems, all the way up through your back neck. I mean, there's what you put on your feet when you run can really be detrimental to a lot of different uh, body parts. So we want to make sure we get you in the right thing. And uh, I've got some, some examples here just to go through them really quickly. Uh, different brands. Uh, I brought Quite a few brooks because they show things a little bit better on their shoe and it's easier to, uh, to show you. This is actually a Saucony. This is a high cushion neutral shoe. Um, this shoe has an 8 millimeter heel to toe drop, uh, which basically means that the heel is a little bit higher than the toe, so it's designed for forward momentum. Uh, this shoe is going to lean you forward, help you lean forward while you're running to get you and you know, get that forward momentum going. This is a neutral shoe. This is the Saucony Ride. Um, it, has, it has nothing on the inside of the shoe that's gonna help anybody that needs, needs some stability in the shoe. If you're a pronator, this shoe is not for you. Uh, this is for somebody that already starts right down the center of their foot. And then we're gonna go up to a guidance shoe. Uh, this, is, this is Brooks Ravenna. Uh, this is the men's version. This is a guidance shoe and a, a great way to tell the difference in the types of shoes as far as uh, when you get into the guidance or the stability and, and, and the motion control shoes. A lot of these shoe companies are going to discolor what we call the medial post. The medial post is the actual support in the shoe. So this is the part of the shoe that's going to support your foot if it starts to pronate. It's going to kind of guide it back to a neutral position. And this is exactly what this shoe is going to do. This is a guidance shoe. So it's only got a small post in here. This foam is, this is all EVA foam, part of the cushioning system in the shoe. This foam is the same foam, it's just condensed, so it's harder. You can tell it's, it's, it's just, it's harder, so 
If you were to, to step and start to roll in like this, this shoe's just going to kind of guide you back to the center of your foot. So, you know, we can keep everything aligned. Definitely, biometrically, you want to be aligned. Uh, next one is, uh, this is a Brooks Adrenaline. <clears throat> uh, one of the <coughs> most uh, popular, or I shouldn't say popular, one of the best-selling shoes in the world right now. It's a great multi-purpose shoe, but it is a stability shoe. You can see the difference in the amount of the post uh, on this shoe. It's got a lot more. It goes all the way back to the heel. So this shoe's going to give you more stability starting at the heel. All the pronation starts at the heel. So when you, when you strike on your heel, that's when you start to come in. So depending on how bad you come in is how far back this post needs to go. So this is what we would call stability. It's for somebody that pronates pretty bad. Uh, and then we're going to go up to a motion control shoe. And this shoe is Brooks again. Um, and it's called the Beast. And it is a beast. <laughs> As these shoes get uh, have more stability or motion control in them, they're going to get heavier. Um, there's a lot of condensed foam in here. Um, there's some medial support, some plastic medial support here. This is for somebody that really, really pronates badly. Typically, this is for a very large person. Um, and not always, but usually somebody that we put in the beast is going to be somebody that is, uh, I'm not even I'm not going to say overweight, but just a heavy person. I mean, we've got big uh, linemen that come in, that play on the Aggies, that come in and we, sometimes we've got to put them in these because they're just big guys, a lot of weight, and over the years, that weight has caused some problems on their joints, and their ankles are rolling in, uh, their arches are collapsing, they're just they're just big guys. So this this is a shoe that's usually gonna go on somebody that's a, you know, a little bit bigger than, than average. Um, it's, got a, it's got a ton of support. And again, you, 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 they get heavier and heavier as the support goes up, because that, all the stuff that's added to that shoe, more foam, more support, is gonna make it heavier and heavier. Now, um, a little, we, we was talking about the pronation starts at the heel. Most of the time, uh, I'm going to say probably 80 to 90 percent of the time that we put somebody in a shoe that has guidance or stability in it, uh, their heel strike. So uh, when you strike your heel, the, pron the pronation starts there. Um, a couple of things about heel striking, obviously, uh, it, it's not the most efficient way to run. When you heel strike, you're basically, you're starting and then you're hitting your heel and your, your leg is straight, your joints are straight, you're, you're, you're almost stopping yourself. It's, it's almost a preventative motion. You're, you have to hit here and then go and hit here and then go. And every time you strike on your heel and everything, everything's kind of locked in place. You're, from your ankle up through your knee, through your hip, all the way through your back you're sending major impact through those joints. That's not really the way they're supposed to work. So a more efficient type of running, we'll get into some of the issues, um, is, is going to be a midfoot to a forefoot run. So midfoot to forefoot, uh, when, we, when you run midfoot to forefoot, you can pretty much eliminate this kind of shoe because you're getting off of your heel and you're gonna start striking on your midfoot or your forefoot. So it, most of the time it's gonna take all that pronation Maybe not all of it, but most of it away. So that heel strike coming here, you, you land flat-footed or up on your feet, you don't have to worry about it going this way because it all starts at the heel. So much more efficient, much better for your body for sure. So when you mid-foot to forefoot strike, you're actually using the joints in your body as shock absorbers, and that's what they are, they're natural shock absorbers. So you take a step mid-foot, you're gonna have your knee over your foot, your hip right behind it, and when you step, everything does what it's supposed to do. So you're not doing this, and then all that shock up there, you're actually absorbing the shock with your midfoot. Uh, midfoot running and forefoot running are very, very efficient. Midfoot uh, is pretty much what I would say, you, it's, it's not for, um, it's, it's not an, an elite running style. For, when you get up on your forefoot, you're gonna be more of an elite, that's more of a speed running, uh, somebody that's gonna run faster. Because when you get up on your toes, uh, your, your momentum is really, I mean, you're leaning forward and you're, you're getting, getting a pretty good, you know, clip going. Midfoot for distance is, unless you're an elite runner and you're running really fast, midfoot for distance is, is, uh, is probably the most efficient that you're going to get. Uh, and again, midfoot is basically just, just stepping flat-footed for the most part. Um, you, can, you can hit the ball of your foot first 
you can tap your heel and come off of your heel, spring off of your heel. That's great midfoot, or just, just kind of land flat-footed. As, as long as you're getting your foot out underneath your knees, not going so far out that you are locking your legs, locking your knees, your joints. You want that foot to be, your knee to be over your foot to use your body as an actual shock absorber. So <clears throat> when you run like that, we get into some of these shoes that don't have that, this, this big heel crash pad on the back. Don't have the stability because you don't necessarily need this. You can, you're landing up here now, so we can eliminate weight and we can eliminate stability. Um, now, it's not to say you can't run midfoot to forefoot in this type of shoe. You absolutely can. Uh, a lot of people do. A lot of people do it with distance running, like doing marathons or ultras, because there's a lot of cushion in these shoes. The cushion is not just back here. It's up here under the midfoot and forefoot as well. So. Um, it's not like we're gonna we, we have to eliminate this type of shoe because we're a, a midfoot runner or you know a forefoot runner. You can still use this if you want the cushion, but you can go to other shoes to uh, to lose some weight, get a little bit you know a little bit lighter shoe, a little bit faster shoe. Um, got a couple of shoes here that are that are, are, are more of a natural style running shoe, and I guess it's a what we call it when you're a midfoot to forefoot runner. You're, you're running more natural. Uh, not necessarily minimal. Minimal is going to be, and I didn't really bring any minimal shoes, but minimal is going to be running uh, in like a vibrant five finger or toe shoe or, or a New Balance Mix Minimus that has very little. I mean, it's going to basically replicate barefoot running. It's not going to have any cushion, very, very, very little cushion. That's, that's minimal running. This, these are going to be natural running shoes. So we're going to eliminate a lot of the heel toe drop. We're going to eliminate a lot of that cushion back here. We're going to lighten the shoe up a ton. Um, but this is a this is a Brooks Pure line. Uh, Brooks came out with their natural running style shoes last year. Uh, this is the second edition. This is the Pure Flow. And again, uh, you can see there's still cushion there. There's still quite a bit of cushion there. This is a really soft feeling, soft landing shoe. Uh, but it's just a four millimeter heel to toe drop. So once you get to six millimeters or less, basically you're talking about you're getting into that natural type of running because this, this is these shoes are going to be designed for somebody that runs on their midfoot or forefoot. When you start running in these shoes, if you're a heel striker, you're going to learn real fast that that's not the shoe for you because the cushion here is very limited and it's really going to hurt. I mean, you're, you're going to get a lot of shock through your body, a lot of impact, and uh, you're going to get sore real fast. So things are going to start hurting. So um, this type of shoe that once you train yourself to start running on that midfoot or that forefoot, these are, these are great shoes. And again, it's more efficient. And, and we're talking about, you know, this is a tri play, so we're talking about tri. So getting into that midfoot to forefoot running uh, is, is very important. I mean, it, it, it's crucial to a triathlete because you, you want to save your body, first of all. The run's the last thing you do. Your legs are, they're gone. I mean, they're whipped when you get off the bike. Uh, when you, when you start, when you get off the bike and start running, you want to get up to that mid, you want to get midfoot to forefoot because you, your hamstrings and your Achilles are so tight from being on that bike. You get off, and everybody, I mean, I'm sure everybody's experienced this, you get off the bike and you start running, the first thing you, I mean, you stiffen up, you start taking really short strides because everything's tight, cramping, hamstrings start cramping, get up, lean forward, get towards that, that midfoot, that forefoot, and let your body do the shock absorber. Keep, you're not flexing this. You're not flexing your hamstring and your and your Achilles as much when you're up there on the midfoot as you're doing if you do this. When you're doing this, you're just about you're basically stretching that Achilles. You're stretching the hamstring. You're going to cramp up real quick. So very efficient. Going to help you a lot when you get off the bike if you can get up and get that forward momentum going by using that midfoot to forefoot stride. So with that said, these type of shoes are <clears throat> are going to be a lot better. This is a, an Asics Nusa Fast. This is kind of a, this is a, a tri slash uh, racing flat that uh, Asics came out with. Asics has the Anusa, which is a tri shoe. Uh, this one's a lot lighter. This has a six millimeter dip toe drop, so it doesn't have a whole lot. It's got a little bit of a heel, very little cushion in the forefoot. This is gonna be a short distance, uh, it's kind of like a racing flat. This would be a great sprint shoe, get off the bike, put, you know, put some speed laces on it. Uh, you know, this is a great 5K, 10K shoe I wouldn't do. Uh, you know, a half or a full on this shoe, for sure, because there's not a whole lot of padding to it. Uh, but again, 
it's that natural type of running shoe, not much padding in the heel. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be heel striking long in this shoe. Um, we'll go to Newton next. Newton has become uh, a staple uh, in, in triathlon. It's, uh, it's, it's the shoe I prefer to wear to run in or to do tries in. Uh, it is a different type of shoe. It is a great shoe for somebody uh, that wants to learn how to midfoot strike or wants something to help them midfoot strike. Now, the way this shoe is designed, I should have brought some cutouts and I didn't. These lugs on the bottom of the shoe here, uh, they do a couple of things. They're great cushioning for one thing. This is, for me, from the shoes that I've tried, uh, midfoot running, midfoot to forefoot running, cushion wise, without going to a big bulky shoe. Uh, you know, that's designed for somebody that heel strikes, but gives you a lot of cushion in the forefoot, too. You can midfoot run in this, or forefoot run in this, give you a lot of cushion. But without one of that big, bulky, heavy shoe, this is the most cushion I've found in a natural style running shoe, because these lugs um, give you some spring in your step, they give you a rebound, there's a lot of cushioning in these lugs. Um, but they do, uh, another thing, and this is what Newton's pretty much known for, is they're going to help you stay on that midfoot to forefoot. Those lugs are going to actually push you forward. Um, they're designed basically to kind of whisper in your ear every time you stay, take a step that, oh, I need to be up here. They're going to roll you forward. And this is a shoe that takes uh, somebody that hasn't midfoot run before, even if you have done a little bit of midfoot running, it's going to take uh, a little bit of getting used to. There's a transition period into it, and, and it, it's going to make you sore because you're using muscles, low calf muscles, Achilles muscles that you haven't, uh, you haven't used before. So it's going to make you sore, but very, very efficient running shoe. Um, it's got a lot of spring in it. There's a couple of different Newtons. Uh, this is basically, this is the gravity or motion. There's two of them, but this is the men's version. It has one, some blown rubber outsole on the heel, and it's got two of these lugs uh, that we have in the forefoot. It's got them back here in the heel, too. Uh, this, is, this is the shoe I run in uh, because I know that I'm not an elite runner and I'm not going to stay up on my forefoot all the time, especially after I get off the bike. I'm going to be tired. I'm going to get back on my heel. <clears throat> they have, this is the women's version. This is the distance. This is, if you lose some weight in this shoe because you get rid of this blown rubber outsole, you get rid of these two lugs. This is, this is pretty much designed for an elite runner, somebody that's going to get up on the forefoot and stay on the forefoot, uh, running a pretty good clip, staying pretty fast, not getting back on their heel, not even tapping that heel when they run. I mean, they're up on their forefoot running the whole way. Because this is, I mean, you take everything off of this heel. This is, this is nothing but very lightweight EVA foam. And if you get on your heel like I know I'm going to do before too long, I'm going to fatigue and I'm going to get back on further and further and further. It's just going to happen. Uh, you'll just shred this heel. It won't take 15, 20 miles and this heel will just start shaving off. Uh, it's just really designed for somebody to be up on, the, on their forefoot. Uh, Newton, there's, there's a couple of other uh, models of Newton that are beginner models of Newton's. Uh, that look more like a traditional running shoe that will help people get from the heel strike to that midfoot strike. Uh, their transition shoes is called the Sir Isaac, which so if anybody's interested in them, Newton makes it, it's just a great all-around shoe. It's a great tri shoe, it's a great distance running shoe, and if you're if you're really fast and the distance shoe is a great speed shoe too. So a uh, real quick question. Yes. You um, you said they're good to get you going. Uh, running forefoot, midfoot to forefoot. Right. But then you also said that um, if you're already running forefoot, then that's pretty good because they'll um, the cushioning's really yeah, good cushioning's, under the ball of the foot. Right. Cushioning's amazing in ball of the foot. So yeah. this is and this is a two mil drop shoe. The distance is a two mil drop shoe. Uh, the gravity is a four mil drop shoe. And basically, that of the two millimeters, you're getting some blown rubber outsole there. You're getting a little protection on the heel, so if you do get back on your heel, or if you're a complete midfoot striker like I am, I hit my heel every time. I just tap it. I don't really, I don't heel strike, but most of us are going to tap our heel when we run. Right. Uh, pretty much run uh, flat-footed. So, but the, the cushioning system is the same on both of these in the forefoot. And yeah, if, either way, whether you're a midfoot striker or a foot forefoot striker, you're putting most of your weight, most of your impact is going onto the ball of your foot when when you hit when you strike. Uh, and the cushioning system on this is is amazing. I mean, it really is. It's the it's a just a, a 
great cushioning system. I mean, all of them are. They've got some good, you know, this is just a different technology that Newton uses. Um, there's, there's some spring, there's some rebound on this. These lugs actually compress. There's chambers in the midsole that you can't see that give these lugs room to actually compress. So you're gonna, these, these are going to compress and give you a little rebound as you step off of them. Um, and this shoe, the great thing about Newton, too, is they're going to last two to three times longer than uh, your typical running shoe because they most most of these shoes are going to wear out from the inside out, meaning that the midsole of the shoe, the cushioning part of the shoe that you really can't see on the inside of the shoe, is the part of the shoe that breaks down. That's that's what wears out uh, from all the impact. And Newton's midsole is is designed uh, a little bit differently, and it's not going to wear out as fast. Uh, what's going to wear out more than anything on this shoe? This shoe's going to wear out from the outside in. You're either going to go through the upper first because you put so many miles on it, or you're going to wear these lugs flat. When you wear the lugs flat, then you lost your cushioning system for the most part, so the shoe's done. Time to get a new one. A lot of people wear out the upper before they actually wear out the, 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 uh, the lugs on these shoes. Uh, we've had shoes come in, people come in with Newtons that have got 2,000 miles on them. Uh, typical, typical, I'm going to say 800 to 1,000 miles, which is, you know, two to three times more than you're going to get out of traditional type of running shoes. So they're a little bit more pricey, but they last, they last a lot longer. Um, tri-specific shoes. Uh, I only brought one. We carry a couple of different tri-specific shoes. Um, right now we're carrying Zoot specifically. We do have some, Pearl, some new, some new Pearl Azumis coming in. Um, tri-specific shoes are going to be made for getting in and out of very, very quickly. Uh, it's going to be a soft flat fit, so you don't have to have sock on. You can you can jump in the shoe barefooted. Uh, you know, you, you get out of the water, you get on, you, you put your shoes on for your bike, you put your cycling shoes on barefooted. Uh, you know, if you don't want to take the time, put socks on, so when you get off the bike, you're still barefooted. You jump in this shoe, it's got a sock liner in it, very soft. It's just like having a sock on. Speed laces, so you just, boom, you're off and running. Um, it's got very big loops on the tongue and the heel, and it has no tongue. So this is just you know, in and out really fast. This is a high cushion shoe. Um, it has drainage holes in it. Zoot makes their shoes with a car uh, carbon fiber shank that goes runs through the shoe. So it's a very responsive shoe. That carbon fiber gives you a lot of spring when you step. This shoe is designed for any type of runner. This is heel striker all the way up to a four foot runner. Anybody can run in this shoe. It has, um, a pretty significant drop. I believe this shoe has a 10 millimeter drop. It's either eight or 10. So it does have more drop. Uh, it is designed for that lower momentum to keep you moving forward, but you can get up on your midfoot uh, to four foot in this shoe. It's not gonna hurt you. But if you do get back on your heel, you got a lot of cushion in the heel as well. Uh, just a tri-specific shoe. The rest of these shoes that are up here, I'm just gonna kinda run through them real quick and show you guys. These are all three, all four zero drop shoes. So these are your, these are your natural, uh, more minimal type running shoes, but these are, since the, the Vibram five finger craze went on, on in the last couple of years, I guess three, four years now, uh, it's kind of winding down. People love that natural running style, that minimal running style, that barefoot type running. So these are basically barefoot type running shoes with cushion. Everybody decided, wow, that's way too hard on my body. I love the concept, but it's killing me. I need some cushion under these. So all these shoe makers have decided, okay, well, we're going to make that minimalistic, natural running type shoe, but we're going to put some cushion under it for people. Um, the one that really kicked it off and got it started is Ultra. Uh, Ultra's only been around for about three years now. <clears throat> they have made, um, this is a barefoot running shoe, but it has a lot of cushion. You can, you can see the cushion under it. You can see metatarsals on the bottom, they've shaped it that way because they consider this a barefoot running shoe. This is, this is like a Vibram five finger shoe, but it's enclosed and it's got cushion. So it's got a, it's an ugly shoe. Nobody likes the way it looks. It's got a giant wide toe box. It looks like a Flintstone shoe, um, something you'd see Fred Flintstone wearing. But it is, uh, it's ultra comfortable. It's got a lot of cushion. That wide toe box is to allow your toes to splay when you run. Just like if you're running, if you're running barefoot. Um, so they kind of started the, the, the craze a couple years ago by putting, you know, making that type of shoe but putting a bunch of cushion under it. Uh, 
people are eating this shoe up. They, they, they've done so well, they came out with a commercial they put on ESPN uh, about six or seven months ago. Uh, it's like a two minute commercial, really cool commercial, but they oversold, I mean, they, they, they didn't have enough inventory. They put that commercial out and people, it went crazy and they were on back order for about four months. It almost killed them. They finally got some product out now and, and you know, everybody's happy, but it huh. was within, I think they said within three days of first hearing that commercial, they were completely out of product. I mean, they had nothing left because it just, it just took off like crazy. How thick is the padding on that sole versus like one of the more classic running shoes? You're about, um, you're gonna, like, let's just take, let's take this sock in. This, the sock in here is gonna be about uh, eight millimeters of, of cushion right. right here. And you're gonna be about four to five in the halter. It just depends on which model. This one's probably got about four. So you're gonna have about half the cushion of a traditional running shoe, which is a ton in a barefoot top, you know, style right. running shoe. But That's you have your feet spread out better. And right, I mean, you're, more you're running barefoot, more natural, toes are splaying, but you've just got a lot of cushion under you. Um, your purists, the guys that run, bear, have run barefoot or run in the five fingers, um, the, the one complaint that they're, get, they're given about having these type of shoes with cushion in them is they're getting hot spots, uh, you know, on the balls of their feet because there's just too much cushion, too much rubbing going on, uh, too much, you know, it's just, they're just giving them hot spots, getting blisters on the bottom of their feet. But that's, that's because they, they're, they're not used to having all the cushion. Uh, so that's all true. Um, Saucony just came out with this shoe. This shoe's three weeks old, I think. This is based on uh, more of a racing last type uh, uh, a racing last. So it's going to be, it's going to look more shape-wise. It's going to look more like this shoe. Uh, it's going to fit more like, I don't want to say a spike, because uh, it's not that confining, uh, but it's just more of a, a faster, it's, we call it a performance last. So it's going to be narrower. It's going to hug your foot a little bit more. Uh, this is a zero drop shoe as well. Uh, not as wide of a toe box, so it's not going to give your toes as much room to play as you would get, uh, you know, in the Ultra or a Vibrant Five Finger, but it's a high cushion shoe. This, this shoe's got a ton of cushion. It looks like, it doesn't look like it's a zero drop shoe. The shoe is flat. Uh, it's just got a lot of cushion under it. This shoe, they've kind of designed it for uh, anybody to run in. It's a zero drop shoe. You can Heel strikers can run in this as they're learning to transition into that midfoot to forefoot running because it's got enough padding back there. Um, but it's got a ton of ton of padding here on the crash pad right underneath, right underneath the ball of the foot. So this is a really, really popular new shoe uh, because it fits like a traditional running shoe, but it's a zero drop shoe and it's very, very lightweight, lots of cushion. Uh, this is Brooks. This is the Drift. This is their new shoe. This is actually a two millimeter drop shoe with an insert that you can take out to make it a zero drop shoe. Uh, it fits, it's got a soft liner fit in it, so uh, you, know, you can wear it barefooted, no problem. It has asymmetrical lacing, so the, the lacing on this shoe follows the curvature of your foot, which is really nice. Um, that, that pointy bone on your foot, on the top of your foot, it's called your navicular. Uh, it's easy to remember because it navigates where your foot's going. That's the only reason I know how to promise. Um, but this, this actually covers that bone and the laces go around it. A lot of times with your standard lacing pattern, it's going to go right across that navicular. And you get your shoelaces tied too tight or even not tied tight. If you, have, if you have an issue with it, uh, it cuts off circulation right there in your navicular. There's several nerves and veins right there. So fatigue can set in from them. I mean, there's a lot of things to do. If you ever have your uh, part of your foot fall asleep, your toes, anything like that, and nine times out of ten, it's due to something on your navicular being too tight. Hmm. So the asymmetrical lacing is great because it goes around that. Um, this is a, a, a mid-level cushion shoe. We're going kind of getting lower and lower on the cushioning on these natural shoes. Very, very lightweight shoe. This is a great workout shoe, a great short-distance shoe, 5K, 10K. Uh, you know, there are people out there that run marathons in these. But it's, uh, it's, it's going to be more of an elite runner that's going to do that. Um, so there's a lot of zero drop shoes out. Last one we'll do is this is uh, Mizuno. This is called the Casaurus, the Wave Casaurus. Uh, <clears throat> again, uh, a little bit less cushion under the midfoot. This is a zero drop shoe. Not much here on the heel at all. Uh, mostly just EVA foam. There's no blown rubber outsole or anything. So this is for somebody that's going to get up on there. 
on their midfoot to forefoot and run. Uh, but it, any of these shoes will make great tri shoes. Speed laces, we, we've got Yanks and Lock laces both. Uh, you guys, most of you guys know about speed laces and how important they are. Make it faster to get in and out of your shoes, just like we kind of showed you with the zoo. The zoo comes with the speed laces, but you can make any shoe into an acceptable tri shoe with with speed laces. I mean, it, you don't have to have a certain type of shoe to run in a tri. There are just different types that uh, that are going to help you. I think more importantly than having uh, the you know a, a certain kind of shoe when you're running a tri is is actually working on uh, working on your gait and getting up to that proper running form, more efficient running form. Get up on your midfoot to forefoot, it's gonna help you, help you tremendously, especially, like I said, especially when you get right off the bike. It's so much better if you can get up on that midfoot to forefoot. So, that's the shoes. A um, Couple other things real quick, just brought some stuff that we have at the store um, that are not necessarily tri specific, but are pretty important, I think, in tries, uh, or for somebody that does try ones. Um, We've got all kinds of compression. We've got Zoot Compression, CEP, 110%. Uh, Brooks makes compression. We've got compression socks, compression sleeves. We've got knickers. Uh, so, you know, I mean, we've, we've got a lot of compression. Compression is, is great. Most of the compression we carry is medical grade. Uh, so you're going to get a lot of compression. With that, it's going to give you, uh, it's going to increase your blood flow. Uh, they're great for recovery. They're great for running, you know, having on during the race. Compression just keeps that blood flowing faster, uh, which just it helps a ton with recovery and helps a ton with injury. The, the more blood you can get circulating through your body, the uh, better off your body's gonna fight fatigue and fight injury. So compression is pretty important. I brought the 110 stuff because it's pretty cool. The sleeves have pockets in them. This set of sleeves comes with, uh, with these ice packs. So you can put ice packs in the freezer, or you can, uh, well then you put them in water and those, those gel beads pop up. You put it in the freezer and freeze it. This bag is a thermal bag, so you can uh, actually take your ice packs, throw them in the bag, they'll keep them cold for up to five to six hours, take it with you on to your race when you're done with your race. Throw those, throw those in real quick, and you're, you're already starting your recovery process just like that. Uh, even if you don't run in them, slip them on when you get done, put that ice in, and you've got compression and ice at the same time, and immediately your recovery, your recovery rate just goes through the roof. It's, you know, cast is where we all get it the most. Um, <clears throat> So these are great. These are the same type of thing. This is the sock. Uh, it also has a, a, a sleeve that goes over it so you put the, or the uh, ice packs in it. And then the last thing, uh, we've got a lot of different, uh, uh, you know, GPS watches, uh, several different types of watches. I just wanted to, to, to show you guys this. This is the, the Garmin 4Runner 910. This is basically designed for triathletes. Um, it's going to do, it's GPS, it's heart rate. It's going to have uh, uh, swim distance. It's, it's one of the only watches on the market, but there's just a few of them that will actually do swim rate. Uh, it'll do swim cadence for you. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great watch to have uh, if you're doing a try because it's, it's something that you can you can use through all three events. It's going it's to you know it's going to calculate everything for you. It's going to keep track of everything. Uh, they also came out with a really cool thing now where you can actually take the watch off the band and they have a bracket for your bike. Um, so when you're training. And you're just doing your bike part of it. You don't want to have your watch on. You can pop it on there and have it right in front of you so you don't have to keep looking at it. So, really cool watch. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's, uh, we do, you know, we have a little bit of everything at the store. Uh, not a huge amount of tri stuff, but I think we have enough for, for the market we're in. And uh, you, know, you want to come in and get analyzed if you haven't already. We'll definitely analyze your gait and make sure you get the right shoes so we can help to prevent injuries for you guys. And, and y'all have a treadmill, so you can put somebody on a treadmill. You have a treadmill, so we're going to yeah. make sure uh, we're going to make sure and watch you running the shoes. And those, um, I have that 110 compression stuff. Those ice packs, also, you can get them wet and put them in the microwave, microwave. You can. and That's heat them up. And, and what you can do, yeah. what I do when, when when I use them when I get done with a, you know something, if I put a lot of miles on my caster tire, put the, put them in ice as that ice starts to melt. It's about 20 minutes uh, once you have them on with your body heat and they start to get soft, and then I just take it right from there and throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, put it back in, and you can do ice and heat just like that. So you've got your compression, your ice and your heat all at one time. It's huge for recovery. It's, it's really yeah. good. Cool. Anybody have any other questions? I'll come. Okay, cool. yeah. Come see us. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys having me out.